Hello all you beautiful people out there. If you're new, welcome. If you're coming back, welcome back. I really do appreciate you. You are the lifeblood of this channel. Today's topic is the Connecticut Witch Trials, and I will be talking about Henry Wolcott. Not much else I need to say. Let's get on with the video. Two original settlers of Windsor had a huge impact on the witch trials, Henry Wolcott and Roger Ludlow. I want to cover these men to give you an idea of how the panic started. In this video, I will cover Wolcott, and in the next video, I will cover Ludlow. Henry Wolcott Sr. had traveled from Somerset to Windsor on the Mary and John. Born in 1578, he led a comfortable life, later acquiring a property in Toland. In 1607, he married a woman named Elizabeth Saunders. Under the Puritan minister Edward Elton, he experienced a radical conversion. At 50 years of age, he decided to leave his home for the New World. He sailed to New England, returned home to sell his property, and took his family to the New World in 1630 on the Mary and John. Scholars think his departure had a lot to do with the severe treatment that Puritans received in England at the time. However, it could also be attributed specifically to the treatment of Elton's books, which foreshadowed hard times for his followers. Elton died in 1624, but he managed to write some books before his death. Two of these were burned at Old St. Paul's Cathedral in London on February 25th, 1625, because they were quote-unquote scandalous and urged innovation. Of course, thinking for yourself is wrong. What brought about this condemnation? These books criticized how people celebrated the Lord's Day extreme opinions about the Sabbath, suspicions of the validity of infant baptism, criticism of the marriage of clerics, and more. They didn't burn the heretics, though, so I guess that's something. To add insult to injury, Thomas Gattaker, a Puritan minister who wrote a preface to one of Elton's books, was imprisoned. The Earl of Manchester intervened to win his freedom, but he was put under house arrest. Basically, there was an ecclesiastical power struggle in which the clergy of the Church of England felt threatened. They tried to associate their opponents with enemies of orthodoxy in the king's mind. Puritans, including Wolcott, felt threatened. And at this time, they probably were threatened. One aspect of Elton's books related to the Ten Commandments would have at least partially informed Wolcott's views on witchcraft. This gave him the religious underpinnings in which to base his legal understanding of witches in his later role of magistrate in Connecticut. Wolcott's commitment to his faith was so strong that it led him to leave his home at 50 years of age, relocating with his family to New England. He would have been familiar with the exposition of the Ten Commandments of God, in which Elton asserts witchcraft breaks several commandments. In the 17th century, a few ministers did include witchcraft in discussions of the commandments, but Elton took it further, including those who sought their help as evil. This was unpopular 
since many sought the help of quote-unquote white witches to lift curses or find lost objects. I do plan on making an entire series on witchcraft, so never fear. White witches are what are called good witches, whereas black witches are bad witches. Uh, white witches um, basically use uh, magic for good, such as healing people and things like that. If a pious man like Walcott, who believed in the existence of witches and witchcraft, were confronted with them, his convictions reinforced by ministers like Elton convinced him that doing the right thing meant punishing the offenders. In 1626, Taunton, which was 10 miles from Toland, was the site of a witchcraft trial that most likely affected Walcott. Even if there had been no direct effect, he would have felt a long-term effect that informed him as an officer of the court in Connecticut. From 1636 to 1639, he served as constable in Windsor, responsible for the process of law with the power to apprehend and detain suspicious persons. To be honest, I have no idea what this means in the setting of colonial Connecticut. In 1637, he was a deputy sent to the General Court of Connecticut that met in Hartford. This court, at that time, had judicial functions as well as serving as a court of appeals until the particular court was established in 1643. After his days in the general court, he served as a magistrate from 1643 until he died in 1655. As both constable and magistrate, he would have become very familiar with the country justice by Michael Dalton, particularly in the witch trials. In this book, Dalton outlines methods for gathering evidence to prove witchcraft. In his position of magistrate, he would have been able to get legal proof of witchcraft, and given his religious views, would have been convinced that a person convicted of witchcraft deserved to die. Walcott was not only among the founders of Windsor, Hartford, and Wethersfield, he was a member of the general court. As a result of such prestige, he would have influenced the first laws of Connecticut. Men like Wolcott led the way in adopting fundamental orders in 1639. These men were also involved in the adoption of capital laws of Connecticut in 1642. One of these laws is that anyone convicted of witchcraft or is found to have a familiar spirit shall be put to death. Well, friends, that's it for today. I know you may not enjoy hearing about this kind of stuff, but unfortunately, it is part of our history, and it is important that we remember this, because if we don't remember it, we're going to repeat the mistakes of the past. If you like this kind of content, please hit the like button, press the subscribe button, and if you want to know when I come out with new content, hit the bell next to the subscribe button. All social media links are in the description, please consider becoming a member of the channel. The join link is right under the um, video. Keep learning and searching for truth. Here are a few videos from my library. 
If you have not watched them yet, go ahead and watch them and tell me what you think. Until next time, friends, stay safe and goodbye.